This video is sponsored by Setapp. So I have the M1 MacBook Air and the M1 iPad Pro, and they have the same processor and a lot of the same abilities. You might be wondering which one you should buy, and I figured this would be a good opportunity to talk about that as a recent owner of the M1 MacBook series. By the way, this also will cover the MacBook Pro. The differences between this and the Pro aren't quite that big of a deal when it comes to comparing it to the iPad Pro. I think there are very specific people that should buy one over the other. And while I went into this video wondering which one would I say is the better buy, when I really thought about it, it actually wasn't that difficult. So yeah, one of these is much better overall than the other. And I'll tell you which one right after this. This, this is, uh, you know you listening to, to Travis. <laughs> What up, players? Welcome back, and for all you new people, welcome. My name's Travis, and I do tech videos every single week and have a blast doing them. If that sounds like fun to you, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Anything I talk about will be in the description below, but for now, let's just get into the video. So I wanna start this video talking about the iPad Pro. Now, I'm gonna use the 12.9 inch with the mini LED at 256 gigs of storage. And I'm doing this because I actually use an iPad Pro to edit all the videos on my YouTube channel. So I'm most kind of used to using this particular product and tell you the pros and cons of it. And there's a lot of pros. And with the M1, the mini LED, there's a lot more pros this year than ever before. But of course, there's always gonna be a couple of minuses. And when you're comparing it directly to the newest MacBooks from Apple, there are some things you should know. And if you're interested in more M1 content, you should subscribe to the channel. I'm doing a bunch of videos on both this tablet and the upcoming MacBooks and M1 everything. So make sure you hit the subscribe button for more of that content. But let's talk about some of the pluses on the new 12.9 inch iPad Pro. And some of this applies to the 11 inch as well, but obviously the mini LED is specific to this particular iPad. Now to be clear, this is the best tablet money can buy. <laughs> a lot of money, by the way but it is the best tablet money can buy. The iPad has pretty much dominated the tablet space for a long time, not just because of the smooth nature of the operating system, the fact that the apps are just, there's just so many. There's just an enormous amount of great apps for the iPad. Now, remember that the entire iPad series of products started out as a consumer-based product, and this Pro is more kind of for prosumers, and I speculate even higher level than that, since you can get a configuration of this after tax for about $2,000. And to my knowledge, ain't no one trying to buy no tablet for $2,000 that ain't making money with it. Having said that, with mini LED, this thing is awesome for HDR content, whether you're watching it or creating it. Really, for the first time, you can actually use a tablet to create and really watch HDR content in its glorious way. Now, I'm telling you, when you first see something like HDR on this tablet, your, your eyes are going to fall out of your head. It's crazy how bright some of the aspects of the videos can be. Now, weirdly, it's... Very impressive in a vacuum, that is to say, without comparing it to anything else, when you compare it to last year's tablet, actually, it's kind of weirdly only a little bit better. I've talked about this in a previous video, uh, and I've shown some stuff, so make sure you watch that. I'll leave a link for that video in the description below and in the end screen. Uh, and all be all is that the screen is definitely better here as far as that goes, but it's not as great as it probably should be above and beyond the 2020 version. Don't forget, you're getting that 120 hertz display. We all want it on everything, 120 hertz, all the things. And of course, it's a touchscreen. Now, I know that's really obvious because it's a tablet, but it's a definite differentiator between this and the MacBook. Touchscreen to me is absolutely critical as everyone uses a touchscreen on their smartphone. So it's not like you have to learn how to use a touchscreen. You know how to use it. So switching over from your phone to an iPad is absolutely natural and everything that uh, Apple has done to the iPad to make sure that your touch experience is excellent uh, has been pretty much on point. Like I said before, the app selection is a really amazing on the iPad Pro. And I, I just wanna take my hat off to the fact that some of these products, even like some of the Adobe products are professional level and LumaFusion as an editor, which I use is definitely professional level. But it's not like super pro level, like the pro level we're hoping for from WWDC. So if you buy this today, you know what you're getting. You're getting a great tablet, definitely the best one out there with the best screen out there, really good sound, really incredible processor, but it's a little bit of caged, it's more a bit of a caged animal as the operating system itself doesn't allow it to reach its peak abilities. That is definitely a con. I mean, this thing will be supported for years in iOS, which is great, but you're already starting to see some things 
in the news. The bloom issue that people are seeing on these things, that is to say the HDR is maybe too bright so that when you're around blacks, you can actually see a bit of a, a bloom around the lights. Now, I haven't personally seen this on this tablet. Um, it could be tablet by tablet. It also could be based on the content that you're using. I, I've not seen it happen on this tablet, but maybe if I specifically looked for it, I would. It's kind of unexcusable for this particular price point, but it is new technology, so you have to kind of expect this sort of thing. Hopefully Apple can figure this out and fix it. Now I mentioned this in my last video, but it's not exactly much faster than the iPad Pro 2020. And what I mean by that is, and the only thing you really can test it in, at least besides benchmarks, which really don't mean a lot, uh, I used a, a 10 minute 4K video from uh, one of the videos I actually put on this very channel and exported it on the 2020 iPad Pro and this. And it was only five seconds faster. Now, other people have told me since that video that they've seen export times faster, but most of the time those are 1080p videos. And if I'm spending over a thousand dollars on a tablet, I'm not doing it to export 1080p videos. I can do that and have been able to do that for many years. There's literally no reason to buy this for 1080p video. So get out of here with that. Now you might see some differences depending on how many special effects and stuff you put on your timeline. But for me, there's been basically no difference. And of course, zooming through the operating system is already fast in the 2020. You're not gonna see that difference here. Basically what I'm saying is if you have the 2020 or 2018 version of the iPad Pro, you really don't need this. If you really wanna see the, the display and see if it really makes a difference to you, go to an Apple store and play around with it. It's cool, but I don't know if it's hundreds of dollars better. Now, if you wanna make it as close to a MacBook as possible, you're obviously gonna to have to get a keyboard and maybe even the pencil because that's actually what takes this thing to the next level. But once you've done that, you're another $400 in the can. Like, holy crap, this thing became super expensive very fast. And that's not to mention the fact that it was already $100 more expensive than last year. So we're already kind of in this laptop price category with an operating system that doesn't allow you to get access to all of the things you can on a fully fledged laptop. So you have an incredible, credible, credible tablet that does some really great things very fast, but is being charged at the price of a full-fledged laptop. Hmm. Not to mention this thing is now heavy as hell. Like just trying to carry this thing around with the magic keyboard, the thing is heavy. You feel like you can knock somebody out with this thing. I'm not super happy with how clunky and big it is with the magic keyboard, but at least if you have last year's magic keyboard, it works just fine. Having said that, I don't know that this is really as much of a productivity piece as Apple would like you to think it is, or at least I should say not yet. WWDC might change that, but for now, it's an incredible tablet with a huge upside that may one day be as functional as a laptop. Speaking of laptops, actually we're gonna do the MacBook M1 next, but before that, if you have one already, I actually have a sponsor for you that's gonna work out getting you all those apps in one place. The M1 Max actual value is hidden in software. That's right, apps and programs that you have to download. But most of the time you have to pay an exorbitant amount of money for licensing fees. SetApps curates such paid flagship apps and brings them all under one roof intended to give a huge boost to your productivity. If you were to buy these separate licenses for each app that's available on SetApp, they will cost more than $6,000, but SetApp, is only $9.99 a month. It allows you to check out some of your favorite apps, including Clean My Mac X, which I absolutely love and use personally, and even a VPN. Paying monthly for that would be close to $10 by itself. And with Set App, you can download tons of apps every single month from multiple categories like lifestyle, creativity, productivity, and more. And it's all for one price every single month. Check out the link in the description for a free seven day trial of Set App. And thanks to Set App for sponsoring this video. The MacBook Air M1. I've been doing videos on the, my channel for a while now. Uh, this is my first MacBook I've ever owned. Make sure you check out a link in the description below for the videos that I did in the, one of the videos where I had iJustine come on and kind of show me the ins and outs of this thing. And it's really super impressive. It's light, thin, and it's stupid fast. And already, as I can show you compared to the iPad Pro, it's just much easier to deal with. It just feels lighter, it's thinner. That alone makes it a little bit more easy for me to use if I wanna go somewhere. Now, if I just take my iPad Pro alone without the keyboard, that's fine. But at that point, it's not quite as much of a productivity powerhouse as I would need it to be. And let's be clear, if you're buying an iPad Pro, you should be buying it for productivity uses. If you just want an iPad, just, just get an iPad or an iPad Air. You don't need this thing. Now, right off the bat, we have some great advantages to the MacBook Air, in this particular case, or MacBook Pro. Number one, it's got a fully fledged operating system. 
That's right, Mac OS is a fully fledged operating system with an actual file system and a bunch of other things that you might need access to that you can't really do on an iPad Pro. Now, if you don't need those things, great. But if you're spending as much as you would on something like this, then maybe you should have access to that. Let's be clear, the iPad Pro fully spec'd out like that with the Magic Keyboard and the Apple Pencil is more expensive than this. And this thing has 16 gigs of RAM. In addition, you can add windows on this thing if you need to. I've actually done a video about this. I'll leave a link in the description below or make sure you watch it later, hit that subscribe button. That alone takes it to another level. So if there's an app or a program or something that you need that only works in windows, you can do it here but you can't do it there. In addition, this thing also supports iOS apps with the M1 now allowing you to use iOS apps directly on your laptop. So basically everything that runs on your iPad can run on here but not the other way around. Because you can put other operating systems on this, your ability to get work done is hampered by nothing. Basically this thing runs all day on the battery it has. It's incredibly powerful and stupid fast. And even if you get the base model eight gig, which may not be enough for you video editors out there, but will be enough for most other people, you're gonna be able to do anything you need on this, whether it be in Mac OS, which is pretty damn awesome, or Windows. Having said that, it's not all rainbows. There are only two ports on this thing, two USB-C, although that's not a terrible thing. You will be living that dongle life, but you'd be living that dongle life with an iPad as well. So let's be honest, two is better than one. And the support for this will probably be just as long, if not longer than the iPad. Of course, the operating systems that come out for Apple are uh, immense. They've been, they support laptops and desktops for many, many years. So it's not like you have to worry about changing out your laptop in a couple of years, it's just not a thing. And the battery life on this thing has been excellent for me, well over 12 to 13 hours, and then some. Uh, I just like to charge before I get too low. This thing has been incredible. Now, the thing that actually makes this so easy for me to tell you which one to buy is kind of the last couple of things that I've just said. After you spec out an entire iPad Pro to give it all the powers that it can, and you put it up against an M1 laptop of any type, whether it be the Air or the Pro, you're spending so much money that you've actually surpassed the amount of money you're spending on something like a MacBook Air, or even the lower end uh, MacBook Pro. It's kind of weird. The iPad Pro is so expensive with the keyboard and, and the pencil that now you, you, you're getting less for spending more. I don't understand how this works. So for me, it's super simple. Unless you absolutely love a tablet, your money is better spent on an M1 MacBook of any sort. Doesn't matter if it's the Pro or not. You get access to all the same apps, you get access to Mac OS, and you get access to Windows if you want it. Here you have iPad OS, and iPad OS, and iPad OS. To be clear, I'll continue to edit my videos on the iPad Pro. I love it, I think it's awesome. But if someone were to come to me and say, I have this much money and I can only buy one or the other, it's a very simple choice. But which would you buy, the MacBook Air or the iPad Pro? Tell me in the comments below and we'll talk about it. And I'll see you next time. Peace and love.